It's official. Hip Boy is here. Very yeah, excited yeah. to have you. I mean, we've been friends on the ground for a minute. I think we've met in person maybe before, but now yeah. we... I'm sure, we, sure we've there. been in some functions together or something, sure. somewhere doing something. I'm sure. Definitely appreciate you having me in. Yeah. C- C3, say what up, dude. Hey, C3. A yeah. little shy, but that's okay. Yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's how he is when he first pop up. Yeah, so how has everything been? I know KD3 is officially out, which is so yeah. exciting. Crazy. So. It's, it's, it's beautiful, man. Like, just the progression of what me and Nas is doing. Like, every time yeah. we drop an album, you just see the general consensus is like yo this is better than the last album mm-hmm. so it's just like it's just more inspiration for me to keep pushing it further and i'm sure for him as well right so i have to ask you which one would you say is your favorite out of the three favorite i got favorite songs off every album but right. best i feel like this is the best like yeah. it's the if i'm not like putting out my best work like you know whatever recent it's like i, I shouldn't even be doing this mm-hmm. yeah. exactly i love this album i mean honestly i have to keep listening to it Thank even you. deeper you know well, and i now, just yeah he really it's not like no surface level you gotta no. really tap in like he's saying stuff like every bar he really and, is you know, i'm switching the beats up keeping it entertaining it's no features it's, yeah. i think this is Nas' first album with no features so that's another ill thing Thing about it mm-hmm. and why did you guys decide to go that route with no features it wasn't uh conscious at first like mm-hmm. we just was working and we put some like you know ideas for maybe features in the pot but it just didn't manifest and by the time we started getting deeper it's like man maybe this should just be your first album with no features and yeah it just like kept shaping up that mm-hmm. way i think it sounds fire with no features honestly like Thank you. and just really just hearing the art of every single song right. you know mm-hmm. hood to hood is probably one of my favorites i love like just the beat, how the switch up goes is crazy. Thanks. Appreciate that. Talk to me about the detail of that song and what like and what it really means. Hood the hood. Oh man, uh, that was one of the early joints, mm-hmm. like one of the first few that we did. And <clears throat> just that, that tempo, just the movement, it feels so California, but then it feels yeah. New York. He shouting out a bunch of New York hoods, but he also shouted out Chicago. Compton, <laughs> Long Beach, IE, you know what I'm saying? Shout out everybody in the IE, but just I don't know, it just like had a good feel to it, but something he really got off on and really rapped on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like, you know, where do you feel like the state of hip hop is going right now? Because I saw earlier today, you know, I don't know if you saw 21 Savage is saying right. some stuff about Nas saying that he's not necessarily relevant to today's rap, but uh-huh. he just has like diehard fans. Do you agree with 21 on that? Um, I mean, I mean, that's what relevancy is. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? I just was at the Hollywood Bowl sold out every age every race like everybody just in there <clears throat> enjoying just pure hip-hop and that's what that's what he is you know what i'm saying like pure hip-hop fans know the deal and you know it's all love mm-hmm. and what does it even mean to be relevant i mean the fact that we're even having the conversations like isn't that being relevant <laughs> no nah, for sure exactly yeah. like just for you to even hop on the platform and speak on it it's like he's in the realm of what's going on mm-hmm. regardless of what he's did and his legendary status like currently right now he got a line on reminisce like he like um what do you say um damn it's just like oh like what we doing right now is really lit like this shit is for real you yeah know? and you've been doing this since you were about what 13 years old Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's when I started writing my mm-hmm. own songs, and then I started producing around 15, 16. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you started more so what, on, like, MySpace and then just grew yeah, from there? Yeah, just, like, I mean, my, between MySpace and just having the little connections that I did from my uncle being in the group Troop, and I knew Steve that was in Troop, and he was writing songs for, like, B2K and Marcus Houston in that era when it was, like, heavy R&B playing. And uh, so I just, like, kind of just... Finesse my way in through that, but then I, I ended up meeting Polo the Don when I was 18 off MySpace, and that really just, you know, put things into perspective for how close I really was to really doing something. Yeah, do you feel... Doing, <laughs> Uh-oh, now he's having fun. You wanna hey, you want to say hey? Say what's up. Come on, C3. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so do you feel like it's difficult uh, being from L.A. to make it? Because, I mean, you're from Fontana, correct? I'm from, I grew up in Pasadena until I was 13, and okay. then I moved to the IE um, until I was 19, and I moved to Atlanta, and that's when I was working with Polo, and uh, I mean, I don't know, I feel like it's only all in how you look at it, because, I mean, the industry is out here, so yeah. I always just looked at it as opportunities, mm-hmm. like, anybody I could play my music for, my beats for, like, if I felt like you was in the game, I was trying to uh, approach you and just being consistent and persistent about it, so I feel like anywhere you are, you just gotta, like, if you love it and you really running in them right circles you're gonna make it happen Mm -hmm. what was that struggle 
people like you know coming up like were you out there passing out like mixtapes I was doing everything like, I, I, sleeping on um, people's couches <laughs> everything everything yeah. everything like way back when I was uh, making my own CDs burning them and going to the Ontario mills and selling them and uh, just like <clears throat> really locked in on that level then when I started trying to get beats off like anywhere any studio I could be at anywhere I thought an artist was I just was in there trying to play beats trying to like just be consistent and be persistent mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel like now you know with streaming and music and TikTok do you feel like that's important like do you think of when you make beats like oh man this is gonna go viral or do you just it'd be little moments but at the end of the day like you, I don't really make music for that I just make it like uh, as like really like I try to challenge myself and impress myself Yeah. like if I can make something like I know I've done something good before so it's like if I can get that feeling again and mm-hmm. push myself then you know wherever the chips fall from there it is what right. it is like what what is like your process like when creating a, a beat because I feel like with producers you guys are so interesting because I feel like you guys really know what manifestation is like and I know that you have to have a very clear yeah. mind state because just the just the art of it alone is just so technical and detailed yeah. you know yeah beyond the art it's just like being patient and then it's just like <laughs> with certain <laughs> artists like you know even me, like, you know, if I'm not locking in on the artist and they really tapped in with me and want to build, like, most people would just come get beats or ask for me to email them beats. And then it's like, just throw a Hail Mary up and hope you make the album. And mm-hmm. it's like, that's cool, but I really like to tap in. So it's like, I feel like Nas empowers me to be able to be the producer I really know I can be and that I should be. Mm-hmm. Just like max out on my, uh, just, just creative ideas. Mm-hmm. And what is that like, you know, working in the lab with Nas? Like... Man, it's how does he like, challenge you? <laughs> man, it's crazy because I be hyped off like the first bars he come up with, <laughs> and sometimes he'll lay some stuff down, and then he'll hit me like later that night after he leaves, and he'll be like, Ma, "I got to come back tomorrow and level that bar up." Like wow. I know I can say it in a more clever, locked in way, and I'll be blown away because I'm like, bro, most people wouldn't even ever think to even say what you said off rip. So mm-hmm. for him to take it uh, to a deeper level is just it's just ill to watch. Mm-hmm. How how did that first come about? Just the relationship between you two. <clears throat> um, us really locking in this time around. I uh, I, I met him back in like 2013. He came to my crib. I had the studio at the crib vibed out i played him ideas i had some stuff ready for him but it just nothing connected at that time like he was feeling the vibes but he it, nothing just nothing happened mm-hmm. so um fast forward to 2020 i saw um my boy double was in the studio with uh Nas and og parker was in there and i just told uh my boy double like yo you should have Nas pull up the chalice like i know i got some stuff for him and it wasn't even like a, we about to just do a whole album or anything like that he just was coming to get some ideas and Right. We tapped in and first day we did like lay down like two, three ideas and he was like, I'm going to pull back up tomorrow and I'm going to keep pulling up. And I just thought he was just talking. I'm like, this is Nas, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But he just kept pulling up and we just kept making songs every time he came. Mm-hmm. Would you say out of all the artists that you've worked with, like, has he challenged you the most? Um, I mean... It's a, I mean, it's a lot of great artists that I work with. You know, Big Sean, that's another close collaborator of mine. Mm-hmm. Like, he's another one who some of the first things he thinks to say is just, like, automatic to me. But then he'll be like, nah, you got to think on a deeper level. So it's like, mm-hmm. I, I would say, like, Big Sean, Dom Kennedy, and Nas is, like, the ones who really, like, challenge me the most. Mm-hmm. I have to say, probably my favorite song that you've ever produced, at least like top five, has to be Berserk. That ah, crazy. Pr- the production on uh, that uh, is uh, insane, oh, yeah, and yeah. I wish that it. I know they performed it at an award show. Hey, I don't remember cool. exactly <laughs> which one, <laughs> but I was always saying, like, especially in the gym, like I'm a I'm a gym rat, so like well, I love well, nah, yeah, listening I, to I that see you record. Going up on the, uh, Berserk <laughs> for show on the uh, show and everything. I try my best. What's up? Say you gonna hello. say hey? Say what's up to the microphone. Tell him that you on a Nas song. Yeah. So he co-produced. He has some credits uh, on it? Yeah, he got some credits, man. His, so how uh, did that come about? <clears throat> so most of the albums that we've done, you know, the, the other three albums were completely done in L.A., and we felt like we needed some, like, New York energy for KD3. Yeah. So we uh, was in New York, <clears throat> and I, I, I got a FaceTime 
for my son, mom, with my son. And Aww. he was talking in the back, and Nas was writing in the headphones, and it was just playing. But he was like, yo, like I had the microphone running. So uh, he was like, yo, it sound ill with C3 talking in the background. So I just Ooh. recorded him, and then I just like put it in different parts of the beat. So he's essentially a part of the production. Yeah. yeah. How do you feel about that? You like it? Say yeah. Say true. <laughs> <laughs> Is he always dancing to the records? Like, oh, how do you man. know when he likes a record? He's dancing, he's singing the <laughs> lyrics, he's doing the ad libs, the talking. It's ill. That's nice. That's nice. Who all has he met? I'm sure he's met so many different artists. <sighs> so many people, man. <laughs> he, he be with Nas. Like, that's OG for real. Really? <laughs> that's pretty tight. Tell you have a cool nice life. Song, I'm not going to lie to you. Tell Your dad is pretty cool. Say, I'm on the Nas song. Michael Myers. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, Michael Myers. Myers. <laughs> You killing, huh? <laughs> nah, I love that. You killing um, at two years old. And I know, <laughs> I think it's so dope, too, that you produced records, obviously, with Beyonce. And the thick record, you said, was in the can for, like, eight years, which is yeah. nuts to me. Like, That's how, cool. as a producer, like, do you get antsy when you have to hold on to that, like, and knowing that? I mean, not even, man. Like, <clears throat> with uh, as far as, like, like a Beyonce, like you gotta just put in the illest work you can. If you mm -hmm. got whatever opportunity you got, if it's to send beats, if it's to pull up, like you know, <clears throat> you just hope that it becomes something. And that was just one of those that, like, you know, we made a lot of dope music, and you know, some stuff was held for a little bit of time. But with this, I feel like that beat was just so different. I couldn't have played it for nobody else anyway. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like it's only certain select few artists that really hear like the elitism and the. The, some of the joints that I do. Mm -hmm. Did you know that that song was going to be on the album? Uh, yeah, right, like, uh, probably like a few months before. Okay. Yeah, she, uh, we had tap, tapped in, and she played me some joints, and it just was like, okay, yeah, it makes sense now. Back mm -hmm. then, it didn't really fit the soundscape of what was going on with her mm -hmm. music, and she just made it work, like, she's genius level. Yeah. yeah. Do you feel like it's harder to produce for a uh, male versus, like, a female? Nah, I mean, especially, you know, I just look at everybody as an artist, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? If you're really into your artistry, like, she's a true artist. It's not just like a, you know, a pop artist, I'm just going to bring in a song and a beat, you record it, and that's it. Like, nah, she's taking the production and doing what she wants to do with it. She's flipping parts and taking stuff out, implementing new sounds. Like, it's real artistry going on. So, any, you know, it don't matter. Artist, woman, uh, man, whatever. It's just like, I just like to work with great artists. Mm -hmm. And you've worked with some of the best. So you've been in the studio with Beyonce while she's working in real yeah, time. for sure. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that that's Plenty just times. insane. I could only imagine, <laughs> like, watching her work and do her thing. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's unreal, man. Any Anytime I get to be around anybody just of that caliber, whether it's, a Nas, a Kanye, Jay Z, Beyonce. It's just like you could you just learn so much by default. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wonder like what is like what have you learned specifically? I guess from Beyonce because she is just like such a go. I mean, it's crazy. <clears throat> I mean, <clears throat> I would say just like <clears throat> to really take it there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like full fledged. Like ha like she got everything mapped out about her artistry. Like exactly how. You know, the music is supposed to hit with the lyrics is supposed to be doing with certain beat changes, like even putting the visual aspect to it in her mind. Like, like that's just like you got to be real detailed. Mm, yeah. Okay. Are there any other female artists that you've worked with? Because I've only, I know Beyonce was in Mary Man, J. Blige. Psh, Rihanna, Rihanna, Mariah Carey, Mary J. Blige, Selena Gomez. That's uh, insane. We could go like literally, uh, what's my girl, Ariana Grande. Plenty of artists. Man. Do you think it's harder <laughs> depending upon like the genre too? Like, do you feel like you have more trouble with certain genres versus nah, others? I don't, cause my first placement ever at nineteen was on Jennifer Lopez. That's the first professional person to buy a beat for me at nineteen years J -Lo? old. J Lo, yeah. Wow. And the cold part is that was oh seven. I met her. Um, I met her like three, four months ago. <laughs> yeah, for the first time, wow. and I got to tell her like, yo. Like you know, you bought my first beat essentially. What song was it? Did you this song called this song called Forever off her Brave album in 07. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's insane. And yeah. you guys never actually met? Never met until recently, yeah. So oh, wow. it just happened like that sometimes. So that was an ill moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there anybody in particular? Because obviously your pool is ridiculous of how many people you work with that you still want to work with that you haven't yet. <laughs> Man, I, people, I've been getting asked this question a lot, but I feel mm -hmm. like a lot, most of the people I like kind of grew up 
looking at it and just like wanting to work with i've been either around them and they show love or i actually work with them so at this point it's just like whoever want to lock in with me and really go crazy yeah because i just feel like you work with everybody at this point yeah this has been a lot (laughs) for real so i want to go back to the album the title king's disease what does that mean i was like talking to my girl deasia about that i'm like what does king's disease mean, mean king's disease is just like you know, overindulgence in, in negativity, overindulgence in anything that's going to, like, lead you to destruction. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, uh, too much of a good thing, too. You know what I'm saying? A lot of good food, like, too much, just too much going on, man. Like, that's yeah. what King's disease is. So it's just like, if you really listen, like, he just, he telling you, even on Hood to Hood, like, he mm-hmm. got bars where it's just, like, addressing how people's perspective is on things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What I was saying is just the state of hip-hop right now, and I just feel like, on the radio for the past four years alone, you know, we've been talking about just so many deaths that happened, like with mm-hmm. Nipsey as of recently mm-hmm. take off. And I'm like You know Nipsey, huh? Aww. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, nah for real though. After uh, what happened with Nip and just seeing how, you know, just reputable, respectable he was and for that to go down, it's just like, man, it's really no, it's no love out here, man. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's been messed up, but the way it gets reported to you instantly, and then now you can see somebody's body on YouTube, on mm-hmm. Instagram, on Twitter, that shouldn't be. That's ridiculous, but, mm-hmm. you know, that's that's where we at. But it's it's always been going on, man. It's always jealousy. It's always hate. And that's why I just move low. I be trying to stay solid. Yeah, what do you think needs to change? <clears throat> man, it's messed up, and... I don't like to get too deep, but I feel like it's it's so implanted in just like even take like the 21 Savage thing. Right. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> like, I just feel like that's a part of King's disease. Like, how do you look at a, a you know, a black hip hop artist, legendary guy <clears throat> who just won his first Grammy a couple years ago. Right. Mm-hmm. Just put out four critically acclaimed albums. We don't see, like, these young rock guys being like, Aerosmith, them niggas ain't relevant. Uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, they, we wouldn't see that, but we have to see that with hip-hop. And that's just, like, that's just whack, man. It's just, like, <clears throat> that's just what was keeping us there. That's, what's, that's what King's disease is. Mm-hmm. I just don't understand why we have to tear each other down, especially just within, like, the black and brown community. Like, seeing another yeah. black man talking about another black man saying that they're not relevant, it's just, like, that's how I feel in regards to, like, black on black crime. Like, I just mm-hmm. under, don't understand, like, when is enough going to be enough? Yeah, you know, it's just like it's just real implanted in, in, in I feel like not even just us, it's in everybody. It's like, you know, crazy people in all, that come in every race. Come on, dude. <laughs> and uh, so for us to change, we have to come up with some whole new genetic code because <laughs> hate is out there mm-hmm. heavily, mm-hmm. period. Yeah, when um, Kanye said to take your tag off, why did you decide to go that route for that little time period? <clears throat> Man, honestly, that was just uh, like a little, for me at the time, it was confirmation because I had already kind of was thinking not to use a tag, but I would have it on certain joints and then he'd just be like, take it off. And it's like, he told me just like, you know, to him it's corny, but mm. it was, he come from a different era. It's, mm-hmm. it's always evolving. It's always changing. And it's like, literally I seen the dudes who came after me, Mustard, Mike, Will, Metro, like they all had tags on their beats. It's like, imagine if Click, Niggas in Paris, right. uh, Bow Down, all these joints, Backseat Freestyle had a Hit Boy tag on them. It would just even be different, just like from a perspective of like, when your name is out there and it's already on it's popping you could go get all type of extra bags you could go dj and play your music like me i didn't have that real opportunity Mm -hmm. in that time you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. because i just you know it was it was just like all about the music like everything Mm -hmm. just was about the music so it's cool though because i got a lot of longevity and uh just even me starting to use my tag around when racks in the middle and berserk came out like that just changed my whole like just just people's perspective on me because it's like I kept hitting them back to back with the tag mm-hmm. so much so to you know from magic till now like I barely been using the tag I think mm-hmm. I used the tag twice or something on KD3 like yeah. it's not it don't even matter like I'm just back to my I'm just trying to kill with the music and everything yeah. else gonna line up and when you gonna kill with more of the rapping because I was uh, talking to my boy Avalino oh, from yeah, London, yeah, yeah, yeah. which cold. is wild. Cold. I I right, they're crazy, right? <laughs> I linked with him, and first of all, I think that's insane that you're so tapped in 
around the world. Word. And when I talked to him, he was like letting me know, I don't know if that was a secret, that he was working with you. But mm. I'm like, yo, do you understand like how big of a deal that is? And he was just telling me how you just welcomed him in with like open arms. And I think that nah, that's Yeah, my boy beautiful. David Kim, who mixed, uh, he mixed all four of the Nas albums that we just did. Um, he mixed Avelino's album as well. Mm -hmm. So he brought him in, we chopped it. And I, uh, we was actually about to just dip, and I was like, "Yo, peep this!" And I, pe I played him the song I had started, sent it to him. He ended up sending three verses back, and we just arranged it and made it a joint. So that's definitely gonna be one of the next ones. And man, I got some, I got some, I got some stuff lined up. Yeah, mm -hmm. and he said that he wants to hear you rap more, and I right, think you right, are on one of his right. songs. So no, nah, sure. <laughs> nah, we gonna tap in on that. Yeah, how do you tap in with people just all over the world like that? <clears throat> Man. Like, did you just link with him in the studio, or did you find? No, nah, my my engineer was mixing his album. Yes, oh, yeah, so yeah okay, my gotcha. my engineer was mixing his album, and my engineer's studio is right next to mine. So he just brought him in. He mm -hmm. wanted to meet. He wanted to play some ideas, and it was just solid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm excited to hear it. Not gonna lie, maybe heard in one or two. Nah, but. <laughs> for sure. But I'm excited though. I think that's amazing. Do you feel, Hit Boy, that you are getting the recognition that you deserve? Because I always feel that's very important, especially the people behind the scenes. You yeah, know? nah, I mean, I feel like it's getting to that point for sure to where it's just like you can't deny what's going on. But mm -hmm. that just came from me feeling like I wasn't getting the recognition and just feeling like, man, I'm about to go crazy. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Four Nas album, two years, working on mad projects. Like, you know what I'm saying? I did Don Tolliver single last year, Corday single. So I'm still working with younger artists. I was on Nardo Wick album, wow. just like doing everything I could possibly do to just be like, every time you hear me, it's like, yo, this guy is mm -hmm. one of those, you mm -hmm. know? And for some of the newer artists, who would you say that you're looking out for right now? Man, every time I get asked this question, I draw a blank. But, <laughs> phew, man, <laughs> damn. Who I be listening to? Like, I'm talking about, like, like new, new motherfuckers. Oh, like, I mean... The homie PZ, I, I rock with the homie PZ from Michigan. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he doing his thing. The homie Rio. Um, psh, hey, whoever. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm just trying to tap in with anybody and everybody. Mm -hmm. What about females, though, too? Uh, who going crazy? Glorilla I mean, is def crazy. Definitely Glorilla. We tapped in on a session. We did a dope song the first day we met. So we'll see where that go. But she doing her thing for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you get frustrated with other producer tags? and be like, because you're hit boy. There's like hit kid. or like hit maker. Nah. <laughs> Who's the first? <clears throat> hey, <laughs> Who's man. the first hit? <laughs> they, they they know who the first hit is. I don't even got to say that. But know. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's all love. Everybody doing their thing. Man, it's about hits. That's mm -hmm. what I was told. That's why I got this name. Hit boy used to be hit boys. It was two of us and the producer that you know was older than us doing this thing he was like yo this game is all about hits so i told the homie like let's shit let's just call it hit boys mm -hmm. and then um he ended up doing some little fugazi stuff and then i just like had a we had a myspace <clears throat> i didn't intentionally even change my name to hit boy we just i just like after i like X dude out I just cut the S off of the MySpace and, and people started like hitting me up like yo hit boy and I was like I'm gonna just keep this name mm -hmm. yeah. that's fire what is your process when creating beats like what does that look like and how fast can you make a beat or have yeah you? that's crazy you say that um, I feel like the faster I make beats the more people love them like mm -hmm. I feel like the stuff I s try to like rack my brain and just like I'm about to be Beethoven right now and do like <laughs> everything I want to do as a producer like nah just get the basses make it feel like something and give it enough space for an artist to get on that's why i've been getting so many placements because before people would hear my beats and be like yo this is so ill but i can't really hear where to fit myself in mm. so i just start stripping back and just like let me just get the basis of what i feel like an artist will be able to connect with and then if i need to add more stuff i can complement it to what they're doing yeah so how fast <laughs> anywhere between I mean, I feel like if the stuff I make within 10 minutes, that's that'd be the one. 10 minutes? Yeah. That's crazy. At least getting the basis of it. I'm not just saying, like, that's all I ever did and right. we're throwing it out. <laughs> like, I'm going to go over the song more and more. But just, like, as far as having the groove and having the sounds that people want to connect with, they, it got to be quick. Mm -hmm. You mentioned Beethoven. So do you play the keys? Yeah, I play keys, yeah. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Enough to make beats. Yeah, because I was wondering if the keys on some of the songs 
were you? Yeah, for sure. That's crazy. So did you teach yourself or did you get like a teacher? Yeah, for sure. I mean, and just like being around great musicians. Like mm-hmm. I was around 1500. I knew 1500 since 05. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I was one year out of high school and got to be around them dudes. And I seen Mars and Lawrence and James Fauntleroy, all legends, doing their thing at a young age. And I was just inspired by that. Mm-hmm. I'm so interested with kids because I've been playing the piano since I was like eight years old. So oh, I crazy. just think that that's incredible when producers like learn how to play, you know, mm-hmm. other instruments. Do you play yeah. anything else besides nah, keys? Nah, but I want to lock in and learn, you know, whatever, guitar, all yeah. that. Trumpet, trombone. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> all right. So what did you say is like your favorite song off the album? So I can off go KD3. listen to it ten more times. Man, today... <laughs> I'm going to go reminisce today, man, okay. just because, like, how I brought in the drill part at the end. Like, ain't nobody doing that. I ain't never heard nobody mm. go from a 90s bop, hip-hop, crazy, damn near mob, deep drums to, like, flipping it on some uh, same sample, slowing it down, changing the pitch. Like, I'm just on one right yeah. now. Like, it reminisce, <laughs> man. Why did you guys decide to do, like, a trilogy? It just was natural progression. Like, it was like we... It was being asked for by his fans and by the people that's tapped in with me. And mm-hmm. Every album, like, I did an album. I mean, I did an uh, interview with uh, the homies at Apple Music today, Ero and Low Key and Nadeska. And at the end of the interview, they like, yo, what's up with KD4? I'm like, right. Yo, the album came out three days ago. <laughs> Crazy. But they you think just we, said you could make a beat in 10 like, minutes, so I mean. Right, right. No, nah, for <laughs> sure. Like, I'm like, you know, if Nas is, whenever Nas is ready, I'm, I'm locked in. I'm locked and loaded. Yeah. So what is next? For him, boy. I feel man, like y'all was moving own, and My own music, for sure. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. going to be coming with multiple projects of my own, whether it's the rap stuff or even just um, production albums featuring other artists. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? The same way a Khaled would put together, like, a genius level, like, you know, just collaboration. Like, that's what I'm going to be on, too. Mm-hmm. And how does it feel just as a black man being a Grammy Award winning producer? Like, I just... I, wanna uh, I mean, it's it's dope. You know what I'm saying? Like... Having my first uh, producer of the year nomination at the Grammys last year, that was just like, man, long time coming. But, man, we ain't ever really, like, it's only a few people that ever won that award. You know what I'm saying? saying? That was, like, of my color. So I'm just like, that's ill to just even be in that realm. Mm -hmm. Is it crazy that we're still sometimes even the first of things? Yeah, not for real. (laughs) I mean, Martin Luther King then was alive not, it wasn't that long ago. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, they was still... Like, it wasn't like 1910 or some shit. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? That was like some of our family members was thugging and walking around, and they's the same age as Martin Luther King or Malcolm X or whatever the case is. So, yeah, we got a long way to go, man. It's we just do. this whole life, this hip hop thing. Like, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Was well, there anything that we didn't touch on that you feel that you want to tap into? No, I think I think we solid. All right, well, I appreciate you for tapping in with me. I'm excited. KD3 is out now. Go get it. Go listen. Exactly, exactly. Hip boy, let's go.